Good day, everybody. This is Reverend Martin Sampson of New Hope Church of God, Trenton, New Jersey. On behalf of our Bishop, Bishop Philip M. Bonaparte and First Lady Bonaparte and all of the ministers and hardworking co-laborers of the Lord in New Hope Church of God, I would want to say welcome to our church. New Hope Church of God is located in three locations in East Windsor, Long Branch, and Trenton. Our calendar for Sunday services, we have service in Long Branch, we start at 8 o'clock, and we have also have service in East Windsor, we start at 10 o'clock. At our Trenton location, service start at 12 o'clock. I want to take this time to invite everyone watching right now on social media, whatever platform, I want to say the doors of God's house is open unto you. Please make sure you attend the services at our churches. Our doors are open, the ushers are posted. Remember, today's message was preached by me, and the theme of that message was knowing God in time of adversity. And somebody may ask, what is the text? The text came from Romans 8, verse 38 to 39. It's good that we know God in time of adversity, but we cannot know God when we isolate ourselves from the house of God. Don't allow COVID to keep you in, though God needs you to come in his house. You are welcome to worship with us on behalf of our bishop, Bishop Philip M. Bonaparte, First Lady Tracy Bonaparte, all of the ministers and hardworking co-laborers of the Lord. I want to say welcome and come and worship with us. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. A place where you can find your home. Somebody give God a praise this morning. You can do better than that this morning. Somebody wave to Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Are you blessed being in the presence of God this morning? I hear that. Are you blessed being in God's house this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there a daughter of David in this house? Or is there a brother of David in this house that would say, I was blessed when they said unto me, come, let us go in the house of the Lord. Is that somebody saying that this morning? If you say that, make the heartiest noise in this house and get God, I give you the glory. Yes, we got some witness in this house this morning. Amen. Have your beautiful seat. You was all smartly dressed. Bless God for you. And because of you, we are here. And because of God, we have assembled. In Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I, before I do anything, I would love to give my honest and sincere appreciation to God Almighty. The owner of everything that make me who I am right now. And I give God, Father, I give you all the glory that I can be able to stand before your people this morning to say, Thou sayest the Lord. Secondly, I want to give God the glory for my spiritual father, Bishop Philip M. Bonaparte. Somebody give you a hand of applause, give you a hand of applause. That man, he deserved, he deserved that. Give me a bigger hand of applause this morning. And his wonderful and daddy wife, First Lady Tracy, that they could agree in obedience to God to afford me the opportunity to stand on this altar. It's not a right, people. It's a privilege. He can choose not to put me up here. That is his right. This is his office. This is where God has called him. And when he says God has spoken, we must obey it in Jesus' name. I also want to salute all of our ministers, the reverends, the hardworking leaders of this great church. I want to say God bless you all in the congregation. And before we go into the word of God, let me take this time to encourage and uh, also appeal for your help as my daddy wife. Before I can go, I don't want to get into trouble. And I want to take this time, church, can you join me? Just put your hands together as I appreciate my wonderful wife, Reverend Kenesha Samson. You know I'm not going to forget to acknowledge you before I get in problem. <laughs> God bless you. She's, she's the oil to my engine. She got me going. Yeah, I bless God for this wonderful, awesome daughter of God. She's obedient. And I bless God for being 
a part of my life. Thank you for being my wife. In Jesus' name, amen. And as we celebrate the Thanksgiving coming up this week, I also want to appeal to the men of this church, not just this location, but all of our locations, those of you viewing on Facebook or YouTube, we are appealing to you that if you can volunteer your services on that day to help. You know it's a custom and tradition in this church that on Thanksgiving, we give our food to the needed. So we will need you to help out in any way you can help out. Donations are still coming. We're not rejecting anyone who has not donated. You can uh, reach out to the kitchen ministry and probably they're going to tell you what they need or whatever God has laid on your heart that could also be a support to what we're going to do on Thanksgiving Day. We're going to be as early as 6 o'clock. So those of you that can make it at 6, those that can make it even after 6, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, we will appreciate your coming on our day. Amen? Amen. And I just want to apologize. I know if my bishop was here, he would have done the same. Um, the heating system, they are working on it. And uh, last week we had the engineers came in. They check it out, and uh, they recommended that something need to be changed, apart from the one that they brought. So they promised that this week, that, that just start today, that we will have heat in the church. So we're praying that all goes well next week. Please, we know we apologize that you have to leave your warm and comfortable home, and you come and now uh, the system is still down. But we know God is here, and the greatest heat that we can ever get is the heat from God, right? So we want to bless God for that, somebody, in Jesus' name. I feel warm up here because I know I'm up here because of the Lord. Amen, somebody. And we want to bless God for that. Amen. And uh, this morning, I'm not going to be before you long as the Holy Spirit lead. And I've been struggling with the word of God. This when pastor reached out to me and told me that I was going to be up here. I've been asking God, what am I going to say up there? But I went back to my friend. My best friend who always been there for me and who is always there on assignment. Because Jesus said that is his assignment that he come into this world to help us, to teach us, to remind us of things of the past, things now and things to come. The Holy Spirit. And now uh, he led me to this scripture in Romans chapter 8. And I'm just going to take two verses and there where the preaching is going to begin for today. And that's Romans 8, the last two verses in chapter 8. The last two verses. Yeah. He said, for I am persuaded. This is the writing of Apostle Paul. For I am, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Hmm. Paul is convicted. He's, he's, he's convinced. In verse 39 say, Neither height nor death nor any other creature shall be able, this is where the preaching is today, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, Anything shall be able to separate us. Somebody say, make it personal this morning. Say, I, nothing can separate I from the love of God. Father God, I give you all the glory and the honor this morning. Speak through me, O oh God, to your glory, God, for your people understanding. Back your work out with evidence because you said your work come to accomplish and it won't return to you void. So, Father, we expect something out of your word this morning. Let expectations be met, O oh God. Let desires be met. Let solutions come to problems this morning. Let your anointing come, God, that you will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I want to quickly speak to you on a team. How do you serve God in time of adversities? How do you serve God in times of adversities? How do you know God in times of adversities? The word adversity means, when I look at it, I say the state of hardship, difficulty, misfortune in one's life. 
Adversity is not limited to an individual. Everyone has adversity, some form of adversities in their life. But I would want to speak on just six of those that I was able to capture in my studies. Adversity, the first one is physical adversity. Physical adversity is wherein maybe one has lost his professional lazy through injury that have caused him that he can no longer function as he used to be before. That could be applied to an addict, someone who played basketball, who lived on basketball for the means of survival. I'm just using basketball. And then this day he got injured and he can no longer play as he used to play. Play does not matter, but he can no longer provide for his family because that was his source of income. Physical adversity. Some people lost their parts. Some people lost some important parts of their body that caused them to be disabled. That those things they used to do before, they can no longer do it. That those things that made them who they were before, that society could count on them, that no more those things can ever work in their body. They are going through physical adversity. Like a blind man in the Bible, in the book of Mark. Mark and his name was um, Blind Bartimaeus. And this blind man, all he did was to beg because what he could not see. Blind Bartimaeus could not see because his sight could lead him in places. He was facing physical adversity. And so many, and you can go on and name and name and name so many others. Some are crippled in the wheelchair. They want to do what you and I are able to do. But they cannot. They are going through physical adversity. You can see and recognize it. And we have mental adversity. Some people have lost their mind. Some people depend on doctor for direction. Some people depend on people to take care of them because their mental state is not right. They are going through mental adversity. They depend on direction for others. They cannot make decisions for themselves. It is something that they have to live with. It's something they have to struggle with for the rest of their life. And one of it, the third one is financial adversity. We all go through some financial crisis. We all go through some form of financial inavailability. Out of the finances are not enough to sponsor the activities of the home. Out of the finances cannot meet up with the payment of our bills in home. We are so stressed about finances. You may be faced with financial, financial uh, adversity. And we all go through that. The songwriter said, the more money you get, the more problems you come across. Then tell me if, can, if you cannot even get the money. It means the problem will keep adding up and the responsibility will keep adding up and the needs will keep adding up and the stress to, 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 to get finances will keep adding up. So you begin to struggle with that. It becomes a serious adversity in your life. But in the wake of this situation, how do you look up to God? In the wake of going through all of these forms of adversities, how do you still regard him as God? That we have spiritual adversity. Some people suffer from spiritual problems. We all do suffer from spiritual problems. From the day you say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, you begin an enemy to the devil. 
And no one sees the devil. The devil is not going to walk outside the street with some horns on his head and say, I am Lucifer. He's going to work through spiritual means to get to you. And you fight with that every day. This is the reason why every night you have to go to bed to pray to God for divine coverage. That's why every time you pray, you say, Father, I need your divine protection. I need you to cover me. Before I get on the highway, I need spiritual covering. Because you cannot see what is going on in the spiritual atmosphere. Remember, the supernatural controls the natural. So if you are not sensitive to your spiritual environment, to know that you are at war with the enemy, you are at war with the devil, the Lucifer, the accuser of the burden, and you just step out because you think you have a car and you can drive, you have a driver license, you are endangering your life. You are endangering your life. So we all face spiritual adversity. I can remember the very first time a pastor allowed me to step up here to pray. To, not to pray, but to preach the word of God. The next week, I got into a car accident. Why? Because the devil was angry that I was used to preach God's word. Because you left your house this morning, the enemies are mad. In fact, before coming, it was a spiritual struggle in the atmosphere. You are not going. You got this thing to do. You got this re responsibility to cover. You got this person to meet. You got this thing to take care of. But you said, I'm going to push through. I'm going to push through. In all of the adversities, we, how do you serve God? That we have Global adversity. Global adversity is what we're going through today. The pandemic. The pandemic is not only affecting America. It's not only affecting one continent. We have seven continents in the world. And every continent has been affected by the COVID-19. Every family somewhere around the world are very skeptical about how you associate yourself with others. We cannot step out because of the pandemic. Somebody is saying, I'm no longer going to church. Because of the pandemic, somebody is saying, I'm no longer going to be in the house of God because why? I'm afraid that COVID-19 is going to take me. But look at you this morning. You are speaking to Apostle Paul this morning. You say nothing will separate me from the love of God. If you sit back home and say, God, I'm not going to church because COVID is around, you got a great reason. You got a great reason because you are not the only person who will be sitting down home. Before the pandemic, we used to have people coming all from all over to fill these pills. But where are they? Where are they? How do they serve God? How do they look at God in time of adversity? We all may come to church on Sunday, but we all may not see God the same way. We all may sit in the same pew, but we all do not have the same relationship with God. We all may have the same problem, but we all do not refer to God the same way in that problem. Do I have a witness to that this morning? We all may have financial needs, but we all do not call on God or we all do not depend on him for the solution. How do you see God in time of adversity? How do you see God in this COVID season? Is he your protector? Is he your, is he your dependable God? Is he your divine covering? Is he the one that cover you on job? Is he the one that cover you on the tree? Is he the one that cover you on the job? Is he the one that cover you in the grocery store? But listen, some will say, I can go to the grocery store to go get stuff for my kids and myself, but I cannot go to church. Is God only limited to the church, church? Is he only in this building? The Bible says, when I look at the Bible the last time, it says he is the creator of the entire universe. 
And he is the only present. He's present everywhere. So if he can guard you in the grocery store, he's able to protect you in the church. If he can guard you in the boutique, he's able to protect you in the church. How can a great God allow you to fall sick and get COVID in his house where he did not allow you to get COVID on the job? The reason is that we do not see God the same way. The reason is that we do not react to God in time of adversities the same way. Some people use their situations to run away from God. And some people use the situation to draw close to God. I want you to be that person. That your situation will draw you close to God, not to send you away from God. He said in Psalm chapter 20, he said, call me in the days of trouble and the God of Jacob shall defend you. Call me in the days of trouble. God is not only interested in protecting you when all is well with you. God wants to be God when men say there is no way out. God want to be God when doctors say when you step out there, you got to get contaminated with that disease. God want to show himself strong. But this only going to happen if you have a mindset that God is with me. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear what? No evil for thou out with me, the raw and the star, the call with me. I will fear what? No evil. Do we have somebody who speak the David in the face of COVID? Do we have somebody who will speak to the prophet and say, Lord, no matter how this bill keep adding up, I know my God, he is the provider, he is the sustainer, he is the author and finisher of my faith. This will not defeat me. I know sometimes we think because we have come to church, we have been so committed sometimes in serving God and when we get sick or we in situation and God have not spoken yet, it means that God have turned his back. Remember the scripture. He say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, even when you go through the rivers, I will be with you. When you go through the fires, I will be standing right there. These are scriptures to encourage you that you will not turn away from God in this time. These are scriptures to build your faith, to know that your heavenly father still got your back. I want to make reference to a lady in the Bible, in the book of Luke chapter 8. And this lady, we all hear her story all the time. The lady with the issue of blood. For 12 good years. Living a very miserable life. But in her illness. In her mental state of being. In her physical state of being. She did not use her situation to give up on God. She was seeking every opportunity to draw close. So this day when she heard that Jesus was passing by, no matter how people look at her in that crowd, she said, I'm no longer looking at anybody. I'm not looking at my surrounding. I'm not looking at my condition. I'm not looking at the pool of blood, but I'm looking to touch the heat of his garment. She had a situation. And her situation drew her close to God. She had adversity. And her adversity drew her close to God. And the Bible says, as she touched Jesus' garment, instantly she got healed. The moment she pushed and she touched Jesus, something shifted in the atmosphere. She did not sit down home and look at all of the doctor reports because the Bible says she has spent all her loss seeking physician for results but she did not get any 
for any doctor, be a witch doctor or doctor in a hospital, she did not get one result. But the day she made her way to see Jesus, something changed. Something changed. If you sit at home and thinking that COVID has suppressed you, COVID has caused you to stay and, and limit you and limit you before God. I want to tell you God is bigger than what you think about. I want to tell you that God is bigger than COVID. I want to tell you that God is bigger than our situation. I want to tell you that God is bigger than our problem you face with right now. So you need to use this problem and get close to God. Use the situation and call him your father. And stop complaining. And one of the products of adversity is that when you start to have adversity in your life, it has the propensity to place you in a case to change your behavior. The more problem you face in life and no solutions start to come, it provides room for the devil to speak the negative to you. So you do, not, you, you, you do not need any situation. You do not need anything that will cause, that will create atmosphere or a vacuum for the devil to be able to speak to you because he needs you in your lunar time. We have a saying, they say, out of mind is the devil workshop. The reason why you are so isolated and so afraid to be in the house of God and the devil is keeping you in that corner is because he wants to have access to you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it said the prince, the God of this world, has blinded the mind of the unbelievers so that they will not know the truth of God. The devil don't fight your health. He's not interested in making you crippled. He's not interested in making you blind. Because I, if I look around the last time, I saw a crippled man in a chair praising God. When I look around, I saw a blind man praising God. But what the devil is interested in is your mind. You can have everything on you functioning. You could have your legs functioning. You could have your mental state being very uh, alert. But when the devil gets captured of your mind, he sees you. So that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing to get you out of the house of God. To place you in that space that you alone will only be listening to the negative and the positive. The negative and the positive. Remember, every time you sit down, before you make a decision, there is always two verses that speak to you. One will tell you that this is not right, and one will tell you it's right. And the one that will tell you it is right, even though it is not right, will convince you that it is right. But the one that will tell you that it is not right will just be one time, one or two times, and then it's done with you. It left for you to make the decision. The devil will always want to speak to you in that vow that way. You can make it. You have a reason to do it. You are qualified to do this. But God is saying, take your time. It's not time for that. It's not a right decision to make yet. Give you a little bit of space, and I'm going to make it happy. I'm speaking to somebody right now who is sitting down home because of COVID. I want to speak to you that God Almighty, he's still the God on the truth. When I remember, he is the Alpha, he is the Omega. He is the beginning, he is the end. He is the first, he is the last. He has never failed. He will never fail. He remains on the truth forever. And he can save you in your house. He can save you anywhere. All you need is to believe. And church, one of the ways that we can overcome adversities, as I come close, one of the ways we overcome our adversities is to build our faith. Is to build our faith and to continue. And the second way is to speak the word of, back, of God back to our situation. Sometimes all by myself, in my mind, I speak to myself like I'm, like I'm having a conversation with somebody. And I answer and I respond. It be like a question and answer period or an argument, mental argument. Sometimes the devil is going to tell you, you're not going to make it. I say, I'm going to make it. The devil is going to be there. You will not succeed. I say, I'm going to succeed. You had to speak it back to him and tell you that God lives in me and you have no space in me. 
That's the only way you can overcome him. They say we overcome by the devil by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb. Your testimony is that reference you're going to make to him. When he come at you to say, you are not going to make it in the sickness. I said, devil, when I was in my mother's womb, I had an opportunity to either be dead or alive. But the fact that God brought me on earth, he has a plan and a purpose. And I know I'm coming out of the sickness in the name of Jesus. Because he is the master healer. Let it be a conversation in war. And an action on the hour. wall. But if you sit down. And allow him to just speak. And you just believe. That he plays you in his corner. And he sees you from the presence of the believers. Remember Hebrew 10 verse 25 says. Now do not despise the assembly of the believers. Do not. Do not despise. Do not cut off from the assembly of the believers. You need to be around. You need to hear something. The assembly of the believer is where we assemble together. It's where we come to praise God together. It's where we come to encourage one another. It's where we come to ask questions about the word of God. It's where we come to know God the more. But hey, if the devil cut you off from the presence of God, he have cut you off from your future. And remember the devil come to, to do three things in your life. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. The first thing he does, he steal your joy. He steal your peace. He steal your bravery. He steal your faith. And he plays you in the corner. And the next thing he do, he kills your faith. He kills your belief in God. And when all of the tools are gone, it means that this God is useless. He has no faith. He has no belief in God. I have captured him. He's not useful to my kingdom. What can I do to him? Destroy him. We need to understand that we live in time of adversity. Nobody should tell you that after COVID that there would be no other problem in your life that you will face. Because from the day of Genesis to Revelation, there have always been problems. But courageous people have overcome their problem in God Almighty. People of faith have overcome their problems in God Almighty. It's no time to think that because you are saved, it means that God is done with you. He needs you when you are saved. He needs you when you are not saved. He needs you when you are in bed. He needs you when you are out of your bed. How do you know God in time of adversity? How do you see God in time of adversity? In 2 Kings chapter 6, there's a story about the city of Samaria. The Bible says King Hazarov had mobilized his soldiers. He had mobilized his men against Israel. And the Bible says they, they, they was, that, that his troop was so mighty when Israel saw the troop of King Hazarov, they got afraid. And King Hazarov sieged the entire city of the entire city of Samaria. The Bible referred to that as the siege of Samaria. That no one was going in and no one was going out. No one could leave to go and look for food for their case. They were tied in because they had been surrounded by the enemy. The entire city ran out of food. The Bible says one day the king was walking by, walking the walls in Samaria, and he heard a lady calling him, Oh, king, live forever. Oh, king, can I ask you a question? He and a lady of God cannot answer your question. I cannot answer your question. He said, if God cannot save you, I cannot save you. But because of a continuous calling, he stopped and said, Okay, what is your problem? She said, King, I made a deal with my friend that if we eat my child today, tomorrow, 
we will eat hers. And the day came to eat her child, she, she when she had her young boy in the house. And when I came to ISO, she put a violin and that there was no fruitful discussion. That was not a plan. The king ripped off his clothes to see his citizens eating human beings. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the story. That's not where I want to go. But the entire city was sieged. I want to believe there was still men of God in that city. There was still somebody who believed that God could make something happen. Even though there was no way out. Even though the city was locked down. But there was somebody who knew that God can still make miracles. The king said, where is that guy called Elijah? Where is he? The city was going through, going through an, an adversity. But Elijah still believed that God could make it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have COVID on every side. You cannot run from New Jersey to Philadelphia, you're going to meet COVID. You cannot run from America to Africa, you're going to meet COVID. You need an Elijah spirit to say, God can still save me. You need an Elijah to say, God is still able to make miracles, even though great Dr. Fashi and FDS and CDC, all of the great scientists have said we are still looking up. So they call Elijah. Elijah said, King, I know by tomorrow. <laughs> Somebody said tomorrow. I know by tomorrow. But I know by tomorrow there will be abundance of everything so at the gate of Samaria. The advisors of the king Look at Elijah like, is this guy crazy? How are we going to get supplies? How are we going to get the flowers? How are we going to get the meal? How are we going to get the oil? How are we going to get this coming? When we have enemies have surrounded our city. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems to be that COVID has surrounded you. But I know there's a God that breaks through every barrier. I know there is a God who penetrates every wall. I know there's a God who opens every door. I know there's a God who makes way when there seems to be no way. I know there's a God who can save you even in the midst of those that are infected with the virus. I know there's a God who can still put food on your table in the midst of unemployment. I know there's a God who who can still make a way? He said in Psalm 100, Psalm 121, he said, For I will look up to the hill. For when coming what? My help. My help coming from the Lord who made what? The heavens. And you can end it for me. Hallelujah, somebody. And God is so great that he can make a way. He is the way maker. If those who feel they are qualified to make things happy cannot make things happy, God can use those things that are of no use, things that you will consider to be non-entity, things of no value to shame the wise. The entire city was locked down. Elijah prophesied and told the king, by tomorrow there is going to be a miracle. I always hear Bishop on the prayer line. He say, a now miracle. Not tomorrow. Not day after, but a now miracle. The advice us to the king was like, king, this guy is out of his head. Because even our generals, those who are trained, that have, they, they, this country have invested a lot of money in to be generous and captain for the army. And saying that we are on a siege. And you see, King, we can get no supply from, from overseas. We can get no supply from our airports. We can get no supply from our farms because they are all seized by the enemy. Church, the question is that I, when I read that scripture, I asked myself, God, apart from Elijah, was there any other person who knew God? In a whole city, just imagine, consider, let's consider, let consider Trenton, Trenton, New Jersey. Trenton has been sieged, God forbid. Trenton has been sieged by the enemies. And we all are afraid. No one to step out, no one to step in. Is there only one person in the entire city of Samaria? No one could brace their faith to say, I'm stepping out there in the name of God. I'm stepping out there with the army of God. But let's see what God did. 
God uses four, four, four guys that could not even stand at the gate of Samaria. These guys were lepers. And the history goes to say that in the days of old, when you had leprosy, you were not allowed to associate with the people in the city. You were in the outskirts of the city because of your leper, because it is a contagious disease. But these were the people that brought liberation to the whole city. And these four guys sat by themselves outside the city. They're like, guys, if we stay here, we're going to die. And if we go to the enemies, we're going to die. But we have to make a decision. Somebody I'm speaking to right now. If you stay in the house, it's not going to help you. If you stay away from church, it's not going to help you. You need to find God. And they said to themselves, I think it would be better. Let us go to the, to, to the Philistine and tell the, to the Amorites and tell them that, look, we surrender to you guys. If they kill us, they kill us. If they allow us to survive, we will live another day. And the Bible says as they made that decision to step out of their comfort zone, to step out of their hiding place, God made their feet sound to sound like great chariots. God made their legs to sound like a mighty army on walk front. God made them to be the spears men before the army of the Amorites. And the Bible says as they begin to move, the army begin to run away just from leprosy. You need to wake up. You need to wake up. Take that decision. Let that devil leave you alone. Let that enemy start speaking wrong thing in your mind. Let the enemy start speaking all of the negative. Until you take that decision, you won't be free. They made a decision. And the Bible says as they made a decision, the enemy fled. They left out all the goose. They left all the all their armors. They left all the supplies, the gold, all of the food they brought because they were having a, over thousands, hundreds of thousands of men surrounding one city. They had enough food that could feed the city. Even to the extent that the city could have supplies left for months. Insignificant men bracing their faith to free a whole city. If you think because you are not in the house of God, God's work going to go down, you are messing the mark. God going to raise up somebody. Never think that you are, you are untouchable for God. Never think without you, God cannot use somebody to get his work done. If you have the time, you have the privilege, the right to speak God's word, to serve God's people, to sweep in God's house, to do what God is telling you to do, and the devil is telling you that you cannot go, I'm telling you, you are missing the mind because God is raising up army, and we are ready to do God's work. Somebody say, I'm ready to do God's work in this COVID season. I'm ready to move forward in this COVID season. I'm going to do great job. After that, these guys ate. Can you imagine? At a normal time in the city of Samaria, these guys could not find food. I want to believe before they had food, they had to be standing far from the city to get back in for food. But here are leper guys having everything. And they ate. They took some in their tanks. They went back. They still saw food. They packed their tanks. And, and they said to one another, how will we be here eating and the entire city is locked down? Let us go and inform them that God has provided meal. God has provided something. Somebody I'm speaking to right now. The enemy is telling you that all is gone. But God is saying he has provided a means. He has provided something in your situation that you can use to be a blessing to somebody. That God has provided something that is not just enough for you, but it is enough for generations to come. God has deposited a gift in you that he wants you to use in the season to encourage somebody. That gift is not just about you. It's about generations that need to benefit from that water that is in you. Somebody need to drink of that living water. The word of God said, out of that belly shall flow rivers of living water. You are that 
that person sitting down home, you have a gifting, you have a talent, you have a call, you have a ministry that God wants to use. I'm encouraging you. Don't allow the devil to keep you hostage. Don't allow it. Your best is yet to come. Your good days are yet to come. Your lifting is yet to come. Don't allow nothing to hold you down. Don't think about what you're going to wear. Because sometimes the devil says, man, you only have one suit. Every Sunday you're going to take that one suit to church, man. When you were born, you did not even come with one. You came just like that. You were not even sure if your dad was a rich man or a poor man. But God provided for you. If he can provide for you from the child, from the, from the day of your birth. And now you are able to discern between right and wrong. He can still provide for you. Church, we need to use our adversity to draw closer to God. I don't know your adversity. I don't know what you're going through right now. Your situation may not be my situation. Mine may not be yours, but I know we all have something that we are calling on God for. And even if we were eyes to give our prayer request, that we would not be bold to tell the pastor that it's something that is just between we and God. I want you to use that situation to know God. And as you know him in time of difficulty, he values you. He values you because you could have used that situation to turn away from God. But you use the situation to say, God, you are the solution. Some people are using the same situation to get into drug addiction. Some people are using the same situation to find themselves doing in other lives that are not pleasing to God. But you are using the situation to invite God. This morning, I want to encourage you. Let your adversities, in your time of adversities, let it be used that God will be glorified. In this global pandemic that we are all faced with, let us know God the most. Let us get closer and closer to him. And as we do that, he values us and he trusts in us. And he believes that we love him, not because of what he's doing in our life. What good will it do when you have it already and come and give God thanks? What good will it do when you are already made up and giving God thanks, but God will be waiting for you when you are empty, broken, frustrated, beaten down with situation, and you find nowhere else to go but to find Him. And He know that indeed you are a prodigal child. Somebody rise up to your feet this morning. Rise up to your feet this morning. Our faces, Proverbs says, our faces may look different. All may be the same, but our, prob our problems are not the same. I know we all have some issues that we're dealing with in this time. Your issue may not be mine. It may not be the bishop issue. It may not be something, but you know God. You know something that you are praying to God about. I want you to use that gifting that is in you. The devil is not holding you down, from, holding you away from church because he just will have to see you in the house. He's holding you because there is something in you that God wants to use for his purpose. He's holding you down because he don't want you to give birth to that gift. And he wants to make you to justify your home, your home staying by what you're going through. We all could have been home today, but we are here. We're not going to end this service without opening the invitation to someone who has not known God. If you have not accepted our Lord before, if you have not known him before, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it is a great privilege that we still have life. For the psalmist say, for the dead cannot praise God. So while you are alive, is the time. It's an opportunity, it's an altar call. If you have some adversities that you are going through that you want us to pray about, we can pray with you. The altar is meant for prayer. Remember, in Matthew, Jesus said, my father's house shall be called the house of prayer. This is where we come to pray. Even though we pray in our homes, but this altar is a place of solution. And as we come, it's not to this physical altar. As we kneel before this altar, we are kneeling before the throne of God. 
and asking God that I can no longer take this situation with me. I can no longer carry this burden. I need you, Father, to help me. I need you, Lord. We give God the glory. If we have anybody who needs a prayer today, you can walk out. We can pray with you. We'll take our time and pray with you. If you need a prayer, you can just come out. We can pray. And whatever you are, whether you view it online, you also, you can also get a prayer. We will pray with you whether you're online or you're offline. You are in a sanctuary or you are out of the sanctuary. God is everywhere. Heavenly Father, God, we give you praise this morning, this evening, afternoon right now. I give you all the glory and I give you all the honor. Thank you, God, for the wonderful sons and daughters, God, that have come, God, to listen to your word. Father, your word said, oh God, that every word that is spoken in your name will not return to you void, but Father, it will come to accomplish the purpose for which God has been ordained. So Father, I pray, God, that every word spoken today in your name, God, let it meet the needs of your people. Let it juvenile and elevate, God, the spirit of your people to another level, God. We pray, God, for the week of Thanksgiving. We pray, God, for what you have done for us from the beginning of this year to now, God. Thank you for what you are doing even right now and what you're going to do, God. We commit this week into your hands, God. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you take charge. Be the unseen driver. Lead us all home safely. God has protect us from every harm and danger. Let this week be the best week of our lives and testimony to be told God to your name Heavenly Father I give you thanks thank you God thank you God for everything that we cannot say but we can take off we give you praise Lord now God unto him who was able to keep us from falling the only wise God God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the sweet fellowship of the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us now and forevermore. Let the children of God say, Amen. A place for you can be.